All right, let's try this again. I seem to get everything working. I got, I'm over here. Oh, look, my tablet, my pen's working. So it's working on the right screen. Had to restart the computer. Uh, all right, so where was I? So we are going to put new layer, call it Dodge Burn. Dodge Burn. Let's set the transparency, click OK, got that. Uh, my black is already set to the neutral gray, but just to show you, I open this, come over to CMK, type 50 in right there. It was originally set at 100 to give me a solid black. Now it's at 50 to give me a nice neutral gray. Click OK, uh, take the paint bucket tool I'll drop it in right on top of her. That's the active layers, the dodge perm layer that we just created. Come down to the blending mode. Get off normal. Come down to overlay. It'll disappear like it's not there. Dodge and burn is still the selected layer. Uh, before we forget, change that back to black. Just click the little switchy thing down there. Click the Dodge Burn tool, set the burn. I got it on shadows already. Uh, last time I had GIMP open, I had my exposure down to 33.25. Now I just pumped it up to 100 by accident. Now it's at zero, it's very sensitive. Click 25, make sure it's 0.25. All right, that looks good. And then let's see, come down here. Let's blow this up a little bit. Well, this picture was originally uh, down, down rise to fit a uh, for Instagram. I don't want the high res image, so it's you can you can tell the effect right there. Kind of sucks. But whatever. Uh, hardness spacing. Let's uh set the hardness down. Thirty five is good. All right. So I soften the brush up, and with this, I'm just gonna go around the edge of the shadows here. Kind of darken up these dark areas. I want this effect to be nice and subtle. So I'm not going to go too crazy with it. Just kind of following the areas already in shadow, just trying to deepen those shadows up. I was messing with another photo earlier doing this technique and I had the uh, exposure up so high it was actually making her um, deepen some of this area up here too a little more beneath uh, let's see let's do this a little bit just Nice blushy tone. Deepen these shadows up. And you can see that's what we've done so far. Just really trying to paint some shape into her face. Those eyes nice and deep. And if you ever think that you do too much during this technique, you can lower the opacity. You can raise it. You know, if you really screw up, you can just delete the layer and start over. I'm not going to do that, though. That's a little much. She got some nice eyeshadow on right here. So let's deepen that up. Give this eye some shape.
Now, I originally edited this photo in dark table. That's why the shadows are kind of purplish because I did a nice split tone effect. And let's see. Let's see. Let's shrink this photo down just a little bit. So let's get it so it's going to fit on the page here. Uh, I'm going to increase the size of the brush. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Just kind of really add some extra. Dosing on that background. This, so we don't have to do a vignette. This little vignette, and it's okay if I made this brush so soft that if it catch, catches the edges, it's all good. And my brush right here kind of stinks, as you can see, it kind of drifts down. Uh, this is the Huion tablet. So. Not really too pleased with how it works. Let's see, I'm just kind of uh, let's lower the size of the brush a bit. Let's get these shadows just kind of give her a little bit more shape. The image came out a little bit on the flatter side. Here under her leg. Or, all right. And let's see. That's what the image looked like. That's kind of subtle changes. And then I can switch this, turn it to dodge. Now with dodging, you're kind of you gotta think back oh in film uh the more light the film will get the darker deeper the exposure would be if you uh block the amount of light reaching the film before setting it it would uh those will be the uh light areas of the final exposure so you would have these little tools like uh one would be like a cardboard with a little hole cut in it and you would have a light projecting down that would burn into the image into the uh, film dodge you would have this little lollipop kind of rod with a, a circular thing and uh, that would prevent the light you would kind of wave it over do, do, do. this will just kind of Help increase the highlights. I'll go straight down her nose here. Touch her underneath her eyes. Just a little bit. Let's make her lips nice and succulent. Nice blushy cheeks. Oh, something happened to my exposure dropped quite a bit um so we're not really seeing too much of an effect there I thought I was gonna go crazy crazy
Zoom into those beautiful eyes. Let's just do. Yeah, it's really kind of lighting those eyes. Now, if I had opened a different layer, I might be able to fix this area. The cheek, I think, I went a little overboard on. Looks a little too blushy. Uh, but you can see that gives a little bit more shape to her. <laughs> Bring that back down. Oh, and you can see I totally did some weird stuff there. I don't like that, so you know, I may just. So that's that. I think I may nuke that layer and just start over. Because I'm tired. Let's just do this as a dodge layer, and then I'll do a separate burn layer, and then things will be happening, and happy, and I'm tired. Yeah, I'm going to duplicate that layer. Let's see. Let's... Well, that one's dodge. Burn. Let's kind of switch the position. So I got dodge on top, burn on the bottom. Come back with a paintbrush. I suppose you could also use the airbrush too. We never use the airbrush. Let's use the airbrush. Maybe not. Let's use the paintbrush. Actually, we're supposed to be using the dodge and burn tool. 
Silver on the dodge. While we're on burn, but I don't want to do that. And that's 25. That's a good size to start doing the face. All right. Subtlety. I think I need to learn, really focus on when I do these things is subtlety. I tend to not forget to be so subtle and I take it to the extreme and my pictures come out a little bit wonky. table there. That was a bit funky back there, but that's all right. Yeah. Now, that's the trouble is, is Before, after, before, after, before. So much for subtle day, you can really see a clear change. Uh, let's see. Let's darken this up back here. What is going on with my tablet? It's going where I'm not sending it. <sighs> All right, so let's see. Before, after, before, after. Maybe I should shut them down. 
just a little. Really, my goal here was just to kind of shape things out. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that right there. That's pretty good. And then let's turn on this. Switch that to dodge. Let's go to the highlights. Oh, she has like a big ear. Like right down there. I'm trying to debate if I want to change that or not. Let's see. Let's see if I can change that real quick. With my band aid tool. Try and catch these little things before you get this far into the editing. Those hairs I don't mind so much. Uh, maybe this one. That's kind of distracting. trouble is, as I use that tool, I am uh, using the texture, but that's, that's okay, that's not too bad, uh, alright, so where was I, we're dodging, we're on highlights, come up to the dodge layer, there, and let's see, let's increase that, that's good, let's, um, Tighten up some of this. Tighten up a little bit underneath the eyes. It's kind of funny the way the light hitting okay so I'm gonna make okay again let's go into those beautiful eyes brighten up the beautiful eyes See, we can go a little bit more. Before, after, before. Alright. 
So let me turn that off. Well, just a kind of a subtle effect. Gives a little bit more shape. So I like it like that. So let's let's see. Let's line the image right there and now I am going to go into my filters and play around with the Nick collection I love Nick collection let's go to color FX I always click new from visible it creates a whole new layer that way if uh, an error happens which has happened to me a couple times but I still have the original layer underneath. Basically on GIMP, when you use uh, the Nick collection, it opens up a separate program on top. And this gives you a wonderful glow effect. This is Glowheimer Glow. You can increase the saturation. You can decrease it. I like a lot of saturation. Sometimes I like things to look like they're on fire like that. I think. Right about there. I think. It's about the low. That's I think right about there. If I go all the way, I, but I totally lose her here. Things become a little bit too blurry. I go this way. A little bit too much detail. This gives a nice kind of softness. Play with the highlights. Shadows up and lower them. Maybe I want them. Right about there. I'm having a little bit more trouble seeing the highlights. Dynamics. And so you got all these different effects over here. I wonder what photo stylizer is used. I really need to check out oh, get all these cool things right there. Brush that make her like a potato. I don't like the potato. Yeah, so let's not use that. Let's um beautiful beach bypass. Uh oh. Ew, I don't like that. 
Monday morning. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel on Monday morning. Certainly how I felt this morning. Just blah, like my soul was drained. Still kind of feel like that. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, not for this ad. I like the. I like the glamour glow for this one. I'm pretty okay with that. I'm still trying to figure out how these things work. And you do got a loop. A loop which will catch a detail. So you need to go down. Okay, I'm not really looking at the loop right now. So let's leave it like that. Now, the tip, tip image, the no, little tip image message thing. So, it's the original. It's a very subtle change. I kind of softened it up a little bit. And now I'm going to go and play with my analog effects, which is my bread and butter. I'm so tired. I'm tired where I want to edit, but I know that everything I make I'm because I'm tired. I'm not really being too critical. Part of me wants to lay down in the bed and just crash. So you got all these different style cameras, camera effects you can choose, color cast. Kind of shows you a sample of there, and then you can play over here. These are the different film types. All right. Oh, you can make your own. Let's go back to basic detail. Ugh. Ugh, hold on, hold on. Let's turn. Sometimes you just need to turn this other crap off. Alright, detail extraction. Double exposure. Ooh, a double vision. This one's kind of cool. Quite, but uh, you can move, move, move the other exposure around a bit. Yeah, I like double exposure. Go back to classic cameras. Classic camera too. Looks like a pretty okay here. Okay, so here we are. Detail now. More of the detail extraction. 
more uh, color I lose as it turns everything brighter. I ended up washing out all the hard work we just did. Can't turn it down a bit though. saturation too little saturation Get those scratches. We need those beautiful scratches. De stress the image a little. Hide all my imperfections in it. Almost you can't see as well. 